So I wanted to bring you through the process of how we at No Place Like vet the freelancers that we get to design our products. So we've had mixed results over the last few weeks using Upwork. Uh, so we've designed a new system to use internally to help us vet freelancers and get overall a higher product uh, quality and also a higher success rate among the designers that we do actually hire. So let's dive right in and see what we're doing. So for us, our product design success rate, the quality and the amount of time invested in this directly contributes to our cost of sales and thus far our gross profit. Uh, so it's really important and critical that we get this right. Uh, whereas for you, it could be part of your net profit, uh, an ongoing task that you have with a current employee or a designer. Um, so hopefully this process will give you insight as to what we do, how we vet people, and let's take a look now. So for our uh, freelancing, we use Upwork. We have quite good results with this, uh, but I'm gonna get running through a job post that we have here, and just to give you a look at the detail involved with this. Uh, so we're quite upfront about what we need. Uh, we've actually researched this quite heavily and done some tests in-house to find exactly what, what we need here. So step one is to get a really, really good job description, especially for freelancers. You gotta remember these could be looking at uh, your job posts in other languages, so keep things simple, easy to understand, but most important, accurate about what you need at the end. So as you can see in ours, we've got ours broken down into different deliveries, such as texture format, texture details, objects. Now this is obviously gonna be different for yourself, uh, but we've based this off the uh, guidelines provided by both Facebook and Apple for their SDKs. So it's important to have a well-researched, detailed product uh, uh, job description in order to get the best results from day one. So you've gotten a good job post up, you've done your research, you've found out what needs to be done exactly down to a T. Now it's trying, time to try and find the ideal person to do that job. So you're going to see a lot of people apply, some with different uh, portfolios, resumes, etc. Often confident they can complete the task, but uh, sometimes their confidence doesn't exactly match their uh, ability to complete it on time, and especially up to the quality that you might expect. Uh, so it's really important to vet these people really carefully, um, and I'm going to guide you through now the exact templates, processes, forms that we use in order to get this done uh, to a good success rate. So you'll see a lot of different people apply with different backgrounds. Uh, obviously job success rate is quite a good metric to go by, uh, but you'll see people that will often be associated with this with best match. And we've actually worked with our render here who proved to be really, really good. Um, 93% job success rate in base in India. Uh, so what we do is basically short shortlist our freelancers initially. Um, it's very, very quick to do. Um, and really just the initial screen, uh, take a look about what their existing work is. They should obviously have a, a good portfolio uploaded, uh, or if you're not using Upwork or via email, they should be sending you a really detailed portfolio. Uh, we often look instead of just for images uh, of what they do, a downloadable zip file of the projects they've actually worked on. So we can take a look at, in this case, their Blender files under the hood. For you, that may be an Xcode project, Android Studio project, whatever you're working on, make sure you get a look at those exact files. Uh, that's key. So you've got a bunch of designers applied to your detailed job. Now it's time to read and narrow them down, categorize them, and weed out the ones who aren't up to the scratch. So I've done up a blank uh, Google uh, Sheets template here. Uh, so we might want to measure on the skills, knowledge, and attitudes. Uh, so basically you're going to design this for your own uh, task. So for ours, 3D modeling, red topology, uh, texturing are the skills that we need, whereas the knowledge is gonna be more kind of broad, about knowledge about polycans, iOS, iOS experience is desirable, uh, but not 100% necess not necessary. Um, mobile optimization is key for us, and so it's physically based rendering, that we call PBR. Um, and then attitudes, lastly, so what kind of person do you wanna be hiring? Uh, we need somebody who's timely and a good communicator. Um, so oftentimes, uh, we're gonna be looking at their response rate on Upwork for this. Uh, but through each uh, SKA, uh, skills, knowledge, and attitudes, you're gonna give a desired score and an actual score. So it's a real, real easy way uh, in order to categorize um, and 
basically score each person so that you can then uh, at the end of the day uh, attribute who you should be hiring first second third uh, for the jobs that come up you know for for us we're going to have lots of different tasks to do at once uh, so we're going to need one to ten people basically uh, at a given time so for you it may be different so it could be much more critical for yourself um, so make sure to go through this now if you want to add another tab for uh, actions and outcomes uh, so for example if you want to ask some follow-up questions uh, so for example if someone's uh, 3d modeling um, was a, a perceived six you could give a uh, another action of a downloadable zip file for us uh, which would give us access to see exactly to make sure we're categorizing that person the right way uh, but here's just a quick look about the skills knowledge and attitudes that we require for uh, the designer job so you have your template set up you've got your skills knowledge and actions for your specific detailed job description done and now it's time to basically fill those in. So where are you gonna get that info from? Uh, so if you don't have the ability to one-on-one -on -one interview someone, uh, we actually use a Google form for them to fill out information and then verify that information by the use of a downloadable project. So let's take a look at that now and see exactly how we manage our remote teams uh, through a very quick and easy to use process. So reflecting the same Google sheet, we have this Google form. So we're gonna be sending this to all of the applicants uh, with the same skills, knowledge and attitudes. And basically these questions are designed to uh, root out the scoring system that they would give themselves. And then we can use that to do an initial screen and then find the exact people we need uh, after, that exact, after that initial screen. Uh, so for example, we're asking which software would you use to compile this project? Uh, what makes designing for SceneKit and iOS different to desktop? Um, have you designed assets for mobile, uh, mobile use before? Are you proficient with red apology? Um, those kind of questions that we are asking and then portfolio and previous work. So we're gonna ask them to attach their portfolios here as well. And uh, just basically uh, categorize and then fill back in to that Google sheet that we've mentioned before. Uh, with that designer grading, we'll fill them in here and basically uh, use that to know who we should hire first, second, and third. But most importantly is that we are vetting them with that downloadable project. So you've categorized everyone, you've picked someone, now just to make sure that they're on track. Basically follow up with them as often as you need. They should be responsive if they've met your timely criteria, which is important to us. Um, and then just make sure that before signing off on a project that it is finished, that everything meets your exact design spec. So make sure to have a testing or QA process done internally before you actually sign off, get them paid and get them out of there. Um, really important for this because once you've got that payment through, there's obviously a lack of desire for them to wrap up and put polish on their project. So you gotta make sure that that polish is there before everything is done and satisfied on your end. So let's take a look at some of the work that has been done for us and I'll give you a look and see exactly how that fits into our app. So here's an item that um, Render designed for us. It's a corner seat couch. Uh, you can see it's quite detailed here. Uh, nice uh, different textures that he's put on it. So he's given us one for Facebook and one for iOS and this is obviously the iOS one that you're looking at here. Um, but I'm gonna give you a quick look and see exactly how this fits in. So we've got all these different files associated with it. Uh, we've got these texture files, um, and to anyone who knows texturing, you know the detail that kind of goes into these, and it's a lot of work and effort. Um, so it's really good to make sure that these are up to scratch for yourself. Um, these are part of our deliveries, so our deliverables, so we know exactly what we're looking for with this. Again, for our in-house testing, we know what to look for. Um, so we knew that once our render sent us these files, uh, that they were up to scratch and that we could sign off and get them paid ASAP. So there's a quick look about what we do at No Place Like in order to get our freelancers signed up, paid, vetted, uh, and their work approved as well. So let me know what you think. Comment below if this is helpful to you, and hopefully it was. Um, so more videos to come soon. Let me know if there's any topics you require, and uh, we'll chat soon. Thanks.